It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. Around the world, wherever there are dogs, there are dogs in peril. Wherever there are dogs in peril, there are always dog saviors. Follow World Animal Awareness Society cameras as we uncover heroic scenes from around the world. People who can no longer stand by watching and doing nothing as innocent creatures suffer. This is The Dog Saviors. Got you, mama's got you. Hi, buddy. This is Tom McPhee. Um, we're doing uh, uh, an American Strays canine survey this morning here in Houston, around the east side, um, running both sides of Lockwood. Um, you're gonna see a lot of dogs um, in this uh, video. Um, young dogs, old dogs, running in the street, laying in the street, and, uh, and puppies that um, can get out of their space and just go out into um, the neighborhood and that's kind of the point for these videos is to um, really be aware of everything that's taking place on the street all of the different rescues and the uh, humane societies in town are pretty full and there's a, a whole host of rescues all throughout Houston hundreds of independent rescuers and everybody is still kind of maxed out a lot of the dogs that we're going to see um, are not fixed. What are you doing? Hey. He's like, man, I was totally fine until you got here. But this guy, that's a mama. It's a girl. Yeah. She is, uh, she's just kind of sitting around. Oh, baby. I know, he's going to run after us. Guy is just able to run around like this. Let's go. 
we just saw a puppy with the purple on its back um, don't know what that's about but that puppy can come and go and and uh, I see you know that could be a real awful situation because that puppy is only just a few weeks old um, cute as can be but stay tuned um, weigh in on what you're seeing uh, share your comments and thoughts about this um, however the one thing that you have to know is n these dogs just can't be picked up we can't be picking dogs up off the street we can't be stealing dogs you know we don't know who these dogs belong to obviously um, people are letting them roam free and and I'm sure everybody's like well somebody should be responsible and take those dogs I totally get that but there is a process to this and and our process right here is to identify um, the extent of the crisis and the problems here in Houston so bear with us and uh, take a look at what's going on and stay tuned to Stray Dog City as we uh, unfold this story here hello everybody we have merch Woo! I'm a person. I definitely support changes that need to be done for the animals. I'm against the chaining of animals. I'm for uh, making an ordinance against it. I'm for making an ordinance against selling uh, breeded animals. All right. And I'm for making uh, harsher penalties for those that are harming animals. Today's October 6th. And we're outside NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. Cuts for Mutts has organized a very large, peaceful protest um, trying to raise awareness regarding the chain dogs, the stray dogs, um, even own dogs that are not being well cared for or properly cared for in Houston. I think probably almost 200 people have come out for this. I would say the better part of 200 people. Everybody donned in their pink shirts with their Houston Shine Your Light and Torture. Um, they did a long walk down here to be right in front of Energy Stadium because there's a Texans game today. So they've got a crowd of traffic going by. Um, the signs, they're getting some honks uh, from cars. I think further down, the traffic is stopped and they're trying to pass out some pamphlets to people just to create awareness of the situation. And with an election coming up, trying to actually get elected officials in that are interested in this big problem that Houston has. <laughs> South and I am running for Houston City Council District K and it's Kim for K and I am opposed to chaining the animals, the dogs and uh, I think that there needs to be an increased awareness of uh, the treatment of the animals, the dogs, cats and they need to be loved, they need to be cared for, they need to be nurtured and so we need to make some changes as far as regulation for the, for the animals. My little one, my little one, you know all this? This is a picture. I said to myself, this is their event, so I want, you know, I want them to be here. <laughs> this is their event, isn't it? Yes. It's all for them. Yes. I lost myself. I waited still. For a glimmer to arrive. I know it.
Sunday morning, the 25th of January. Uh, we're in Houston, just off 45. We're gonna do a track.
there's this person pulling out right with them. Right there. What's going on, pal? Boy, I like your face. You got an interesting face. Do you like hanging out just in the front there? Is that your spot? What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? <laughs> Another beautiful... Uh, Lots of shepherds this morning. Yeah, this is the shepherd area. You're a good looking pal. Where's your collar? You look pretty young. You look really young. It's another young dog. Oh, this one looks a little hungry though. You a little hungry? He's like, hey, bud, check's up, man. Something's coming. There's three. Oh, boy, aren't you pretty? Yeah. You're pretty. We haven't seen you before, have we? We haven't seen you. You look familiar, though. No fur. He's mangy. He's got no fur.
got it, but should I take him? Yes, but can you bring it up here? His skin is so bad in the back. Hi. He's a good boy. It's okay. Do you want me to dump? No, just let's dump a can of food for him so he knows we're safe. Hi. Oh, look at your poor little chip-tipped ear. Did somebody take a chunk out of your ear, baby boy? Huh? I don't That's have a, a leash. Shepherd. Yeah, he's a purebred German Shepherd. You get to pick him up, Kelly, because I'm not getting made this towel? time. Here, keep him, keep him, keep him here because I'll get the blanket up from the bottom of the car. Look at his skin. I know. It's bad. So in this kind of situation, Kelly, when there's no room at the end, you just can't leave this one. No, no, go ahead. You do what you have to do. Try to get the sheet under him so it's not all over my car. Hey, baby boy. Yes. Yes, baby boy. Yeah, he's in really bad shape, isn't he? Yes. Full-blooded German Shepherd. And I will have my. And what am I gonna do? Hey, Kelly. Yeah. Kelly, I'm posting him you. now. Maybe we can find a German Shepherd rescue. I just found a German Shepherd and got it in rescue. I, I like doing these kind of dogs, but... Tom, what did you say to me? They all just kind of like you, don't they? Well, he, Look like, cuddled now. right up. <laughs> he did, didn't he? Yeah, he's like, all right, let's go. Sure as heck looks full blooded German he Shepherd is. to me. He absolutely is. So, what's the next stop? What happens now? I'm going to post him on Facebook and hope that a German Shepherd rescue will take him. If not, I'll ask for a foster, and if not, I'll go to my house. He's going to go to my house for now anyway. Yeah. 
I'm going to put him in the bedroom. With, it has to be with the puppy, but he's probably too old to get parvo or distemper or anything like that. Yes. I don't think he would have lasted out there more than a week. He pooped out, if I can say this on camera, just piles of pine needles that he had been eating. I'd heard. Effort to, to keep himself from starvation, obviously. Can you get any, do you know, do you get any nourishment eating stuff like that? Is there anything that they would not, get out of that? that? He's pooping them out whole, so I'm assuming it's not. Probably not. I've never heard of pine needles Hi. for anything. <laughs> Hi. And he is what very sweet. He's very dog submissive. Yeah. Um, he's potty you like trained. Snip? You like his snip? See Just a snip. Just, hi. What's he like to eat? Oh, anything. Yeah. We have him on a critical care um, starvation recipe and um, high quality lamb and rice kibble also. So there's a there's a protocol when yes when you know you come across a dog a certain way you and he's eating about seven smaller meals a day. We're slowly increasing the amount. Um, because German Shepherds, large dogs in general, have a tendency to have their intestines twist and cause bloat. So we're being really careful about how much we feed them. These are my favorite kind of dogs to do. So yes, I have 26 years of experience. When you say these are the favorite, the ones that are really... The ones that you know everybody you else didn't get. Neglected. Yes, the, the people, I'm, I guarantee you before we touched him that night, because of the way he looks, nobody had touched him in a long time. Those are the ones I want to cuddle on my lap. He jumped right in and got on my lap. And I want to tell him that they're, you know, they matter. That they're important. Just like the little fluffy guys that, you know, everybody wants. They're just as important. Uh, people failed him. He did nothing on his own. This dog was once a pet. You can tell from how friendly he is, from he's potty trained, he waits till we take him out. Um, he was somebody's boy at one time. What happened, we'll never know. Where are you going, Jonah? Well, that, that backside, though, is still quite the mess, isn't it? Yes, it is. Wow. But we don't have fresh bleeding anymore. He gets myconazole rub downs, myconahex rub downs every day. You got an edge, Bubba. You got an edge, Bubby. Kind of smells, too. Yes, these kind of dogs do not smell pleasant. I will give you that. Hi. Did you know your name is Jonah? Well, Did you know, know that? Let me take a look at this. So, what's the full battery of like everything that now. Because this is, this is an extensive project. Yes, but we'll be taking over it three weeks. Um, we're just going to get him through the critical point right now. And what is going on is we dipped him with a mange medicine right off the bat. We let him dry. We started feeding him the right kind of food. Um, yesterday we applied a Advantage Multi and he gets uh, mycohexidine rub downs every day on his skin which one vet explained that as putting mortar between the bricks. When the skin breaks down, it kind of helps rebuild the skin. That's kind of an interesting idea. Yeah, he said it's like when the mortar falls out of the bricks and all the cells and all the skin start to separate, as you can see it did, that that helps rebuild the mortar. He is still decompressing, so when he's in, he's in a five by five kennel in the house, in the air conditioning. And when he, he pretty much sleeps and eats and potties at this point. So one of the things I'm trying to determine is like, what's the, what's the value of a life? You know, what is... To me or... Well, to everybody, you know, what's the... That differs all the people that saw this dog like this and did nothing. What's the value to them? You know, it's different for the value to me. This dog is as valuable as any other dog you know, and I had a chance to help, and I'll take it. What's with the notched ear in some places that uh, yeah. conveys being snipped? Actually, that's probably a dog bite because he is an intact male. He probably was in a fight over a female. 
he does not have extensive wounds all over his body like some we find, but that probably was a dog bite at one time. Any sense of age? Uh, two to three. Young. Yes. He's young. You want to get a smile? Smile. Can you smile? I know like you don't smiling. like that. I don't like smiling. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't like, like smiling. smiling. But he let me put his warmer pill down and we also warmed him. Without, I know. What are you so, doing? The, the, the thing about this is you kind of like that initial triage. Take him in, get him into like some situation that's somewhat stable and then you already network this one because of the type of dog that it is correct and it's going to it's a breed specific rescue okay yes he's already been accepted into a german shepherd rescue we got about oh two and a half more weeks he'll be fattened up by then his skin will have shed it off all the sores by then we hope and he'll be ready to you know, start on his next phase of his journey. That's great. Because this is a long process, yeah. Yes. But not as long as some people think. We don't know yet if he has heartworms. He has a vet appointment on Monday. Right. Um, however, these dogs recover mm -hmm. fairly quickly most of the time. Mm -hmm. It depends on the severity of starvation. Have some places that we tend to go through every day um, that we're out here and then we usually just kind of weave in and out of streets um, it's amazing we can see you know usually we feed between 40 and 60 dogs every time that we're out here in about four hours there we go look at y'all imagine her as a healthy dog yeah oh. she's gorgeous it's okay i know oh this is the good stuff there we go hey dear mom yeah <laughs> <laughs> going to follow up quickly. Um, if he's feeding these dogs, they will stay. They'll stay put, okay. um, but we'll follow up quickly. Her, her nipples are huge and hot and yes, and um, like feel like a rock. There's something wrong. The puppies either die or she has mastitis. <laughs> I did this, the dog led me to two dead puppies and it broke my heart. So you're taking this one with you? Yeah, we're going to take her to the vet. We are going to have her examined, make sure she, she's probably going to need uh, antibiotics for her mastitis and going to have her heartworm checked and um, just kind of have her get a health check, make sure she's okay before we take her home. You named her Maxine, right? That's what I heard? Yes. <laughs> Tom won <went> over. <laughs> Maxine! Maxie! Alright, come on, Bubba. She is so skinny when I pick her up, it's like nothing.
Um, I called somebody. I got an the fifth board on Kelly. Oh, okay. And somebody knows what's coming and why. I don't remember who I talked to. Oh. That's so unusual. And she's very young. I don't know if she got a false pregnancy. You are. Oh, no, girl. It's okay. So. 36. You want to be 34 pounds? Okay. 34 pounds. She needs to put on some weight. Yes. <laughs> so we just picked her up in the field, so we're not... We know nothing about this dog. We know nothing except that when she saw us, she started running toward us. I'm sorry, I'm almost done. <laughs> Okay, 102.5. You're good. You're awful red. We might have gotten you just right in the nick of time. Um, okay. We'll, but we'll worry about the, the rabies. We'll see what she wants to do. Right, first. Yes. because she's skinny and she's got, looks like an infection. So if she wants to, great. If not, we'll do it later on. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. I could, do, I could start running the heart with this right now. So. She's a baby. I mean, her teeth are just pearly white. This was probably her first heat. Her first heat. Okay. Let me get somebody to help me get that. I will. Oh, okay. Actually, it's one of the other vets I actually draw it, so. Oh, okay. I'm going to worry about it. <laughs> well, you could have been like, I'm sorry, I had a one point of heat. That's not, if she was nursing puppies, that's not normal, is it? Uh, to if be the that puppies were, right, if the puppies just came off of her um, pretty recently, like within the last day or two, yes, I would see that. 
Well, I mean, if she was regularly nursing puppies. So again, if she had been taken off the puppies in the last day or two, that's okay. what you would expect. Like so. she probably was regularly nursing puppies, and then now we don't have any puppies. Because um, the body um, triggers right. all the milk production, and now you don't have any puppies. Because it's, it's well, all of the caudal teats are like that. There's like four big huge So teats. do you think she has uh, just recently been with her puppies? I would think that, again, within the last week, for sure she was with puppies. Um, okay. Or... Um, but because again, you have all the mammary development. So, um, but they're not nursing right now. That's what this is leaking. Yeah. She's filled so with it. So for a day or two or whatever, she has not had her puppies. Well, let me even anticipate. Nurse. Tell you the story. The guy that came out said that she was dumped about two months ago, and she looked really good. She wasn't skinny, <laughs> and so she may have had her puppies in a pipe, and they drowned. Correct. That's what I'm saying. No. I would have no way of knowing where she... No, we did the app and had her, and every time we play the app, she would howl. But she didn't lead us to any puppies, so... And with being like that, I didn't think there was any viable puppies. In the puppy app, Kelly, basically is to trigger her sensibility to go back to her puppies. Yes. That's the idea. And it, and it works. We have had it work in the past. The good thing about this is that it's not infected, it's just en it's engorged. Um, it looks so red, so that's what I was worried it is, about. It's just because she um, probably had several puppies, so um, she was making a supply a for milk. multiple puppies. Um, and so, like I said, it's just it's really, really engorged. So, because there's no bloody discharge, there's no pus. I mean, that's really true milk. It's just, it's all warm. Yeah, good girl. Mm -hmm. You're super brave, huh? She, I mean, she came running down the street. I saw her, and the, she just went boom. And she was heading down the street, but she's apparently dumped because the guy said her hair is coming out. You see, it's dull now. He said she looked really good when she was dumped a couple months ago. Okay. Well, and again, I mean, that's street life. I mean, you can look yeah. at it two months ago. Yeah, look, exactly. And especially, again, being this young, you have puppies, that's not. Yeah. Um, How old do you think she is? Probably a year. Yeah. Yeah, and young, probably young, young, her young. first heat. Mm hmm. Most likely. Yeah. So she's a young, young pup. I mean, she could be even 10 months old, but so again, yeah. she's got all her adult canines. But she's a, um, a very young pup. Yes, that's what I thought too. And yeah. she's very sweet and friendly, <laughs> and she's leash trained. So I mean, somebody loved her at one time. Yep, she probably was a cute pup. And then yep. whether she outgrew the home or the appearance, uh, that's what it is. Maybe they just took the puppies and sold them and got mommy. Yeah. Who knows? No telling, no telling. But again, the good thing on these is that um, they're not infected. It's Should not I ice acid. bandage them? Okay. I know with people, I'm an OBG nurse. You know, we 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 tell them to ace bandage and we actually tell them to use cabbage. Yes, right. So you can do the cabbage things. Most dogs don't lay down long enough for right. you to cabbage. And you could do the same thing with a warm compress just to help kind of, again, do it. The worst thing you can do is actually is milk let it. it. Yeah, because absolutely. That stimulates milk production. So that you just have to let it go. Normally I put them on a little anti-inflammatory just to give relief because, okay. again, it's uncomfortable. Okay. But, again, it's not infected, so it's not like an antibiotic. Thing. For its opinion, based on what you're seeing, <laughs> yeah. this dog has not been around her puppies in a day, two, three? Mm -hmm. Sure, for several days because again, the uh, mammary glands are very, very engorged. Um, so she does have milk production like she did at some point nurse puppies, um, but then they're not there. So what happens is the mammary glands continue to fill and um, they don't have us, nobody's drinking it. So it just overfills. And that's why she's just pooling milk right now. It's because she just needs to, and her she, instinct is to make milk to feed babies. And when you don't have the babies, she's making all this milk and it doesn't have anywhere to go. Can you surmise approximately where that process was with her babies? Are they weeks old? Are they months old? Or? I have no idea because dogs lactate and nurse typically for up to six weeks. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So like, in, just like with us, um, the first few little bit, they're going to nurse a lot. Um, by about six weeks, the pups are doing, they're transitioning onto regular food. The streets has already started to get her. Okay. You know anybody that wants a husky, tell them we yeah. have one. Probably be a month, but she's pretty. She need to be spayed. No yes. more puppies for her. I know that was awesome, huh? You didn't even know I gave you a rabies shot. <laughs> you too busy. Yeah. That's a smart bet, huh? Good <laughs> job. So I already gave her her private card. She don't need to do it again until tomorrow. Okay. And then so it's once a day. Mm -hmm. yeah, and works. the heartworm test. Native. Woohoo! Oh, oh, she's young. Yes. So that's. Awesome. That's always exciting. So 
she's ready to go home with you for she TLC. Is. She's going to get lots of TLC. And I'm not going to be able to pick her up this easy much longer. Ever again, right? I know. She does not believe in Christ. Really it is. want to go in there? <laughs> Dad, I hear you're recording for the World Awareness Society. What is that? Yeah, you mean World Animal Awareness Society? Well, I'm a volunteer with the World Animal Awareness Society, Emerson. I volunteer my voice for use in animal rescue videos. And I don't know if you know this, but everyone at the World Animal Awareness Society is a volunteer. But what do they do? They're award-winning volunteer filmmakers who have interacted with 2,200 animal welfare nonprofits, including Maddie's Fund and Austin Pets Alive, providing information-rich content to more than 45 countries in the last 10 years. Dad, what's that mean? Okay, uh, how about this? They make short movies about animals that are in peril, that are hurting, you know, in bad shape or dying or homeless in the streets. They film rescuers doing heroic work so they can focus on saving lives. The World Animal Awareness Society posts the rescue videos on social media, and then they're broadcast on TV, sharing the heroic stories with people all over the world so they can understand what's really going on. Cool. I like animals. How did you start volunteering? Well, I met their director through social media and saw the work that they were doing and knew that I could help their cause. So I asked if I could volunteer. I am very fortunate to have really great jobs providing the voice to so many shows that I believe it's important to give back. Since I've been volunteering with the World Animal Awareness Society, they have created the seventh most influential YouTube channel for dog rescue lovers in the world, WA2S Films. That's so cool. Hey dad, nice job. Do you think I could volunteer too? You already are, Em. You already are. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. Yep, that'll do, Emerson. That'll do. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. <laughs>